Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Police Chief lashes people spreading fake news. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson has paid individuals for posting fake news in the course of investigations, charging that it only helps the guilty. Speaking during a digital press conference on Tuesday with the High Command, among other matters, announcing of murder charges against Constable Noel Maitland, companion of missing social media influencer Donnelly Donaldson, Major General Anderson highlighted that he said where the challenges we face were conducting an investigation and atmosphere where fake news abound. I am not referring to news with inaccuracy. I am referring to fabricated and misleading stories in relation to the investigation. Every time these fabrications are published, they not only divert the attention of the police, but they further traumatize the grieving family and loved ones, the police commissioner stated. These fake news elements do not serve the interests of the family, they don't serve the interests of the law enforcement, and they do not serve the interests of justice. Fake news bodies the water and causes people to lose faith in the integrity of the judicial process. It only benefits the guilty, he added. Maitland, who is assigned to the St. Andrew North Police Division, was taken into custody last week by detectives from the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch in relation to the Donaldson's disappearance. Donaldson, whose disappearance has drawn nationwide attention, was first reported missing to the police on Wednesday, July 13, after she failed to return home, having reportedly left her house to visit a policeman apartment on the night of July 11. He was formally charged on Tuesday with her murder. The woman's body is yet to be recovered. Capri assigned after DG, ex-beauty queen visit Maitland. At least one cop has been assigned over an unauthorized visit of murder-accused Constable Maitland by a popular dancehall entertainer and a former beauty queen. The visit, which was reported and not documented in the station diary, occurred at the lockup of Grand Spend Police Station in Northern St. Andrew. Maitland was charged on Tuesday with the murder of his girlfriend, social media influencer Donnelly Donaldson. The 24-year-old was the last seen in the company of Maitland on July 11. She was reported missing on July 13. The police said forensic evidence suggests that Donaldson has been murdered. Deputy Commissioner of Police Clifford Blake confirmed on Tuesday that the High Command is aware of the visit that reportedly occurred last week. It is under investigation and I can say yes, at least one member was removed from the station pending the outcome of the investigation, said Blake, during the Jamaica Constabulary Force Monte Press briefing. Maitland's lawyer, Christopher Towson, denied knowledge of the visit when contacted by reporters. Don Senior died at age 87. Donald Webby Senior, father of Grace Kennedy Group Chief Executive Officer Don Jr., died Tuesday at age 87, 10 days shy of his 88th birthday on August 12. Webby Senior was well known for his love of horses and from his early days was a regular visitor to the Caymanas Park. In his tribute, Webby Jr. remembered early days of going to the track in the company of his father. My father and I share a very close relationship. He was an essential part of my life and his love for horses was easily transmitted to me, he stated. Dad has been in racing since 1959. Our first winner, as a syndicate, was with the horse by the name of Ono Grandpa, ridden by Charlie Hustle and trained by Dwight Cheng. I never met anybody in life who loved horse racing like him. It was his hobby, and he genuinely loved horses. He took me to the track when I was 8 years old to watch a horse named Monty Stitch win, the gold graphy, a race I will never forget. His favorite horses were Bonnie Blue Flag, Non Such, and now, of course, the Philly Atomica, who will be running in the prestigious Jamaica Debris next Saturday. His major disappointment, especially in his last years, was that there is no elevator at the track so that he could come and watch in comfort. My father lived a fair and honest life, and I will always remember the values he instilled in me. Rest well, Dad. You have played a good inner, and the family is forever thankful, will be stated. Police identify gang violence as possible motive for Maxfield Avenue double murder. The police say gang violence may be at the heart of the killing of two people in the Maxfield Avenue era of St. Andrew. The two were shot and killed on Emancipation Day at around midnight. Senior Superintendent for St. Andrew South Kirk Ricketts says until the completion of investigations into the incident, they are unable to definitely put forward a motive. Well, at this time, I am unable to point to a motive. I can, however, attribute the incident uh, which occurred 
in an area known to have gang type violence and the fact that the the men were killed with the use of a firearm or firearms that it is quite likely that you know this could be gang related well we're we're, we're seeing um you know information in social media about the perceived orientation of the victims uh, at this stage our investigation is still in its embryonic stage and um I am awaiting my detectives to to give me, uh, you know, so much more concrete details. Education Minister announces further targeted support for students. Education Minister Fable Williams says further targeted support will be provided for nearly half of the nation's students heading to secondary school in September. It comes after data from the last primary exit profile exams reveal that this group is operating below their grade level. Primary schools would have just completed the PEP exams, parents would have gotten the reports, and students will be transitioning to high school come September. Of course, we are looking at that data, and we see that, uh, you know, 40, some 48 percent of the students are not at their grade level. They're operating below their grade level. And so as they transition to high school, for those students as well, we have to have the support there so that they don't struggle in high school. Um, when you look at our attention on the early childhood sector, especially in terms of institutionalizing the age four assessment, meaning by the time a child gets to age four, that child should be assessed for early literacy, early numeracy, for behavioral issues and to the extent that we identify that that child has issues with early numeracy, early literacy, or behavioral problems, then you can see how we can intervene to help that child. Because if we don't, that child is going to struggle when he or she gets to primary school and God help that child in high school. We want to lift the quality of education in all our schools across Jamaica so that the difference between the top and the bottom is minuscule and in that environment you can see how parents, how you as students will be indifferent about the school to which you go because you know that regardless of the school to which you go you would have pretty much you know high quality education. Fraser Baines called for action for an influence bill in the Royal Cobra. Something has to be done. That's the demand made by opposition spokesperson on environment, Sophia Fraser Baines, yesterday. She was reacting to the latest pollution of the Royal Cobra by Wendell Kabak Sant Alumna Company in Newton St. Catherine. Sections of the Royal Cobra in the Bagua Gorge have been affected by a chemical spill from a plant on Saturday. Fraser Baines says something can be done to prevent the pollution and is urging the government to hasten its intervention. And it is most regrettable because we do believe that some things can be done to stem and or prevent these from happening. And because of that, the opposition stands in full support of the various communities and residents who have been impacted by this pollution and ask the government to hasten its intervention to ensure that some semblance of normality is restored. It is indeed a position that the opposition supports. And the reason for that is that it is not the first that this is happening. The preliminary info information available suggests that the pollution came from Wendalco. And if that is in fact the case, then we believe that something has to be done to show that there is a responsibility that the company has. Several St. Catherine communities without water supply fallen rare cobra fish kill. Mayor of Spanish Town Norman Scott says several communities are without water as a result of the recent fish kill in rare cobra in St. Catherine. A chemical spill from Bauxite Company Will Dalco is being blamed for the fish kill. Mr. Scott says the incident has affected the Spanish Town water treatment plant and as such water supply has been disrupted for several days. The mayor says he has received several complaints about a lack of water supply. Well, I think the NWC would have been um, doing what they normally do, which is to chop water to the areas affected. Um, uh, I've been getting complaints from quite a number of communities that they NWC is not living up to their responsibility, so I, I don't know. This thing is happening much too frequent, and the 
Nepal people really needs to step up to the plate and let these people pay for the damages that they, are, they have been creating. I may have to lead a delegation to the Prime Minister, if possible, because he's the minister responsible for NEPA, for them to get some teeth and really start taking some strong actions against the, the aluminum people. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.